Hi guys, I'm Sarah, and welcome to episode 3 of the Barn Quilt Project, the series where I recreate quilt blocks that I see on barns. I found this week's quilt block on the side of a barn in Cookstown, and chose it because I recently thrifted some pink fabric and wanted a chance to use it. Unfortunately, after getting home and zooming in on the photo, the block is in fact purple, not pink. Regardless, I still decided to go ahead with this block and got to work drawing it up and calculating what pieces I would need to cut. I tried searching the internet to see if this block had a name, but I wasn't able to find anything that was exactly the same. There were a couple that were very similar, but not quite right. The bear paw and the T-Rose blocks have almost the same layout, with the only difference being the two outer half-squared triangles at rotated 90 degrees, create leaves instead of claws or petals. This block also has a similar design and color scheme to the sage bud, but the sage bud has a much larger central square and smaller flowers. I've decided to call the one I'm making Lavender Haze after the Taylor Swift song, but if anyone knows a proper name that it goes by, please comment it down below. This block requires five colors, two shades of green, two shades of purple, and a white. I recently got both shades of green I'm using in a mixed bag of quilting fabric that I got from Valley Village, and the light purple was also thrifted a couple of weeks ago. The darker purple I did have to buy because I didn't have anything even close to that color, so I just picked up a solid purple fat quarter at the Dollar Tree. It might not be the highest quality fabric, but it still looks nice. The white is the same eyelet from my staff that I used in last week's block. For each cornered flower, I cut out a three inch square of the light green, a three inch square and a two and a quarter inch square of the darker green, a two and a quarter inch square of the light purple, two two and a quarter inch squares of the darker purple, and two three inch squares and one two and a quarter inch square of the white. I started by pinning the light green square and a white three inch square right sides together, and the darker green three inch square and the other 3 inch white square, also right sides together. I drew a line diagonally across each to guide my sewing. I also laid out the purple and green 2 and a quarter inch squares in the order that they will appear in the finished block, and pinned the dark green to the dark purple, and the light purple to the other dark purple. I sewed up the half square triangles by sewing a quarter inch from either side of the guideline I had drawn and then cut down the guideline to separate the two halves. I also sewed up the other pinned squares with a quarter inch seam allowance. Once the pieces were sewn, I gave them a press, pressing the seams on the half square triangles towards the white and the seams on the smaller squares away from the darker purple. The three inch squares that I cut for the half square triangle do not have to be that big, and you could instead cut yours to two and three quarter inches, but I just prefer making mine a little larger and then trimming them down. So that's what I did next. Once all of my half square triangles were trimmed down to two and a quarter inches, I was able to lay out my entire corner design. I laid out each row prior to pinning to make sure I got my triangles all pointing in the correct directions, and then pinned each of the rows right sides together. I took my pinned rows over to the sewing machine and sewed them up with a quarter inch seam allowance. Working with these smaller squares was definitely finicky, but the block I have planned for next week has even smaller ones. If you don't want to miss it, click that subscribe button. It's going to be a pretty one. Once my rows were all sewn up, I gave them a press. I pressed the seams for the top and bottom rows towards the outside, and the seams for the middle row toward to the middle. I do this so that the seams will nest when I sew the rows together. I once again lay out my pieces in their correct order in order to ensure that they are correctly aligned when I pin the rows together. I start by just pinning the first two rows together so that I don't get confused as to which seam I should be sewing or get the extra fabric snagged by the machine. Once that first seam is sewn, I pin on the top row, making sure it's in the correct orientation and that the corners all line up before sewing it together. 
Once I get that final seam sewn, my corner square is done and just needs a press to get the seams laying nicely. I completed that entire process of making the flowers three more times to give me all four corners I needed for the final block. With the corners done, the hard part was out of the way and I moved on to the middle strips that join it all together. I cut out a two inch square from the light purple to go in the middle of the block. And from the white, I cut out four rectangles measuring two inches by five and three quarter inches. Once I had all of the pieces cut out and ready to be assembled, I was able to lay it all out in the correct order and get my first look at the finished block. I pinned the rows each right sides together to prep them for sewing. You can see with all of my corner blocks laid out, that some of my corners lined up better than others. I'm getting better at nesting my seams together and getting all of my points to meet, but it's still not perfect. Lucky for me, the white strip separating the corner blocks means that there are less corners that have to meet, and I will be able to sew up these rows without too much to worry about. With everything pinned, I took my pieces over to the sewing machine and started by sewing the middle row, since it was quick and easy. Then I did the top and bottom rows. Does anyone have any tips for preventing your seam allowances from flipping up when you sew across them? Because I feel like no matter what I do, one sneaky seam always flips up without me realizing, and I can never be bothered to unpick and fix it. I always just press it flat and pretend it's not there. And with that, it's time to press. I pressed the seams for the top and bottom rows towards the middle, and the seams for the middle row towards the outsides. This is so that the seams will nest, and the corners of the middle square will sit exactly where I want them to be. Finally, I pinned the rows together for the final sewing step. When pinning, I was careful to make sure I lined up the corners of the light purple squares and nested the seams. I really enjoy how the purple and green look together in this block. I feel like that color combo can either look beautiful or like Barney, depending on which shade you choose. So I'm grateful that this block is giving lavender feel to not purple dinosaur. I took it over to the machine and stitched up those final seams to finish off the block, and she is looking good. My corners for the central square all ended up crisp and where I wanted them, and all of the white strips have a consistent width. With all of the sewing done, all that was left was a final press and a trim. I pressed those last seams that I had sewn towards the middle of the block, and just gave the rest of the block a good once over. I trimmed down the edges of the block to bring it to an even 12 inches, and she's done! I really enjoy how this block turned out, and I hope that you guys do too. Subscribe to see which barn quilt I sew up next week. I'll give you guys a little teaser. I'm calling it Strawberry Field. Happy quilting!